Welcome to a ghost story. Jesus said, follow me and I'll make you a fisher of men. So that's our job. I was in the center of Berlin and I met a person living under a bridge. His life was destroyed, drinking a lot of alcohol and I told him about Jesus. And then something happened. I'm so excited to see him again, Andreas. Thank you so much for joining me today and uh, we will talk about your life. Pretty amazing what Jesus has done in your life. Andreas, the first time we saw each other was under the bridge at Bahnhof Zoo, a famous place. But you lived there. What happened that you ended up there as a homeless person? Yeah, what can I tell you? I was born in Berlin, Kreuzberg. My mother, I actually grew up with alcohol. My mother was an alcoholic since I can remember. She unfortunately died of cancer, but she was an alcoholic, drinking vodka and coal. When I went to school, I can still remember, I always went to get my school lunch, took my glass of Fanta, and then I accidentally grabbed the wrong glass, and then I was already on the road with a vodka orange mix myself. So she always needed her alcohol in the morning, and she was actually a good alcoholic. She was drunk every single day. So that's how I grew up with alcohol. In my youth, I was also on the road with my posse. It was common to drink alcohol and then I started an apprenticeship as a carpenter, which I did not pass, but I finished it. But there was still a bit missing. And after that, I slowly started with drugs. Then I did a few things that weren't so nice. I didn't really want to mention them, but then I kind of got stuck on alcohol. So for me, it was normal. In Berlin Neukölln, I was kicked out of my apartment because I didn't pay rent. At that point, I was already homeless for one or two years and I already knew roughly how it works being on the streets. My ex-girlfriend, whom I was with for eight years, we just grew apart and but it was also that kind of relationship that where we drank a lot and the alcohol was already there. And she kicked me out as well because I just drank too much. What does that mean to you, drank too much? Drank too much? Well, three bottles of vodka a day. In the morning, I needed half a bottle to function at all so that this fluttering would go out of my body. This trembling, you know? And yes, that I could somehow walk, function, talk to people and things like that. For that, I needed about half a bottle. It was also beer. It always depended on how much money I would get through begging, but around six or seven, then I still had other buddies who were there. Then there was a flask and there was something and there was something. So it was a lot and my liver had a fair amount of work to do. Then there were drugs added to that. Yes, there was speed, ecstasy, smoking pot, hashish, heroin from time to time. So anything I got my hands on. Also, I did it to numb myself because there were things that happened on the streets, but also in the past that were not very nice. I have done things that were not very nice. I don't want to go into any more detail about those things, but I was, as they say, a sinner without end. I've committed every sin and every inhibition I crossed. That's why I numbed myself so that I wouldn't dream about it anymore and forget what I had done. When I met you, it was winter, it was cold. What was your feeling? I mean, would you have survived that lifestyle any longer? In winter, I realized that afterwards I came to the rehab Bethel, I wouldn't have survived. Definitely not. Because I was too proud, I think, to go to these emergency shelters. I think I would have frozen to death. I also said to myself, I'll drink myself to death. That was my thinking. But then Werner came and put Jesus in my head. Then I said, well, I'll try it again. So actually, quite honestly, I already wanted to be done with life. That was my goal. 
I'll stay on the streets until I'm done. But Jesus told me again, get up and you can do it. You told me that there are things in your life that burdened you very much. You could not get free of them. Then I told you that Jesus can set you free. What happened inside of you when I told you about Jesus? I prayed for you that Jesus would come and change your life. And what was going on inside of you? Yes, first you left, then suddenly I only had Jesus in my head. I didn't know what he was doing to me. I couldn't beg for money anymore. What is this all about with my sins and all? And I don't understand. I kept thinking about it and it didn't leave me. He kind of planted something in me. That doesn't belong there. That's not me, I thought. And the people on the streets that were with me said, Hey, Moth, that was my nickname back then. What's up? You're not begging for money anymore? You're not drinking? I had not taken a sip of beer for the first hour or two. Nothing, nothing at all. I was just thinking. I can still remember that today. Anyway, Jesus was in my head the whole time. And I just thought, what did this man do to me? I couldn't get Jesus out of my head and I said, what's going on here? This isn't me. I thought so at first, but now it is me. So to be without Jesus is just not possible. So today you're completely free. You don't need anything anymore? No more alcohol? Jesus has made you completely free. Was that a process or did it happen relatively quickly? The first two weeks were really hard, yes. The withdrawal, it's cold. You drink a lot, but the alcohol is gone. And you just sit there and shake and you don't know where your head is. And then they tell you something about Jesus and you don't have the nerve for it. Because you're only busy with yourself. The body is just so busy. And then you have the pain from the drug withdrawal on top of that. So you don't know what to do with yourself at first, and you're totally exhausted, just completely exhausted. Those were the first 14 days. I couldn't do anything with it. I was completely focused on myself so that I could get along at all. To understand why I'm here now and make sense of it all. And then I slowly became clearer in my head and knew who he is and who Eugene is, who Paul is and who the leaders are. Then I slowly registered that all the dirt I've been pumping into me is slowly leaving my body. And that was very, very intense. And then at some point it started with Jesus. You consciously gave your life to Jesus. You were baptized. What was that like for you? It started with my conversion. I gave my life to Jesus after about three months. Back then I was supposed to come to the rehab office and then I thought, I've messed up again. Maybe I didn't follow some rule again or something else, but no. They asked me directly if I would accept Jesus and want to give my life to him. Then I said, yes, of course, of course I will. Then I confessed my sins with all the trimmings and gave my life to him. They said, now you're our brother, you belong to Christ's body, his church. How will you continue your life now? Right now I'm at the Bethel Rehab and I have a new family there who really encourages me to get up every single day. I have a daily routine. There's so much love, so much grace that God gives me, but also faithfulness. I have days where I look in the mirror and ask myself, why are you even doing this? Because he loves me so much. He has restored my health and out of the old, he had made something new again. And I am the best example. I am new. I am a new creature. And I will continue to follow him faithfully. Andreas, I'm very happy. I can see the day when we will both walk through Bahnhof Zoo and no one will recognize you. And maybe we will tell one or the other about what God has done in your life. I believe you will be a blessing to many people. I think your story is so extraordinary, what God has done in your life. So thank you very much for the interview. You're welcome. Isn't it amazing what Jesus has done in the life of Andreas? For me, it was only a small step. For him, life changing. You can talk to people and for you, it's only a small step. For the other person, it's life changing. So Jesus said, follow me and I'll make you a fisher of man. Go for it.